On the first half, we're up against two waves of enemies, starting with two Breacher Primuses and a Pyro Abyss Mage, and then two Fatui Operatives, one Animo, and one Cryo. Starting off with the elements you might consider taking into this half, the Operatives have very high resistances of their own elements, namely Animo and Cryo, so I recommend steering away from those to start with. Next, the Breacher Primuses have pretty high Dendro res, so Dendro isn't the most efficient element for clearing this half, but with the help of Deepwood Memories and a secondary source of damage, it actually does okay too. Finally, you do need an element to break the Pyro Abyss Mage's shield, but that's usually not too restrictive as long as you're not going in with a mono Pyro team or something like that. For this run, I've chosen a standard national team that deals a healthy mix of Pyro and Hydro damage, but most importantly, it includes our favorite Alchemy Apprentice, Sucrose, who plays a critical role of keeping enemies together and having a strong knockup on her burst. We'll see in the second wave why that knockup is so important, but for the first wave, the grouping alone is still very useful. At the start of this fight, the first thing I recommend avoiding is using a strong knockback, like most bursts, right in between the Breacher Primuses. This will actually push the Primuses farther apart from each other, and then when they put up their Dendro Shields, you can't pull them together again, so it just makes it much more difficult to deal AoE damage to both of them. Instead, I prefer to use my bursts from behind the Pyro Abyss Mage, or from the outer side of one of the Primuses. This will help to keep them closer together, and make it easier to defeat all three enemies at the same time. In the same vein, I try to keep track of the HP bars of both Primuses, and continuously adjust my focus to whichever one has more HP. The goal is to keep their HP as close to each other as possible, while defeating them at the same time using AoE damage. Going into the second wave, I like to keep my focus on the Animal Operative because she uses mostly ranged attacks, so if you get too far from her, it's really easy for her to get left behind, and you end up missing out on a lot of AoE damage. That having been said, the Cryo Agent, while technically melee ranged, also moves around a lot, which makes it difficult to hit both of them at the same time in a consistent manner. This is where Animo groupers like Sucrose and Kazuha really stand out as highly valuable characters in this fight. I alluded to this earlier in the video, but these operatives have very low poise and they're also very lightweight, which means they can be staggered and knocked up very easily. When you have someone like Sucrose who can knock them up pretty frequently, they end up taking a lot of fall damage throughout the fight, which speeds up your clear time by a pretty significant amount. The other key mechanic to be aware of in this fight is this marking attack that both of the operatives can use. If you aren't able to dodge their attack after you see this mark appear above you, the operatives apply a bond of life and corrosion on you at the same time. This is a really deadly combo because the corrosion causes you to bleed out continuously, and the bond of life prevents you from healing, so you can't easily counter the bleeding either. The corrosion also lasts 10 minutes, which of course is the entire duration of the chamber, so the only way to cleanse these debuffs is to heal enough to get rid of the bond of life first, and then heal back up from the corrosion damage that you took. All of that is basically saying, you need a lot of healing on this half unless you are very confident about dodging these marks. In this case, I have Bennett to take care of the healing for me, so when one of my characters does get marked, I make sure to keep them on the field and inside Bennett's circle until I see that they've healed enough to remove those debuffs. Aside from this, the main positional strategy I try to follow is to wait until the Cryo Operative gets close enough to the Animal Operative, and then use a chain of bursts and abilities to kind of stun lock them together, and use my AoE damage to defeat them at the same time. Going into some other team comps that work here, if you're looking for 4 star heavy options, most teams that include Sucrose in it do very well on this half. We already saw this with the national team, and here I'm using a traditional taser comp. It does a good amount of AoE damage, but again just watch how much fall damage these operatives are taking, thanks to Sucrose's frequent knockups. That is going to be a significant source of your damage. Building on this fall damage mechanic even more, if you have Kazuha, he does an even better job of this because his knockups come from his skill, which has a much shorter cooldown. Here I'm using an overvape team, but it really doesn't even matter who the other three characters are, the vast majority of your damage is going to be that fall damage that Kazuha's skill is inflicting on these operatives. One last team comp I want to highlight here is a Hyper Bloom team. 
This family of team comps is what worked best for me when I excluded team comps that use Sucrose or Kazaha. So Hyper Bloom is what I recommend here if you don't have either of those strong animal groupers. On the second half, we're fighting the Dendro Emu from Down Under, which is a much more straightforward fight. The boss will constantly follow you around, so positioning is not really an issue here. As long as you have good single target damage that isn't Dendro, you should be able to clear this half in about 1 minute or a minute 20 at most. One thing worth mentioning is that some of the boss's attacks do hit pretty hard, especially these jumping slam attacks. Fortunately, they are pretty well telegraphed, so you have plenty of time to dodge them. Just make sure you keep your eye on the boss and be ready to dodge or iframe some of these stronger attacks. The other mechanic to be aware of is that the boss has a rage bar that increases with catalyzed base reactions and goes down when hit by pyro attacks. When the rage bar fills up completely, the boss will use one of three random attacks and become stunned for about 15 seconds, losing 25% res while stunned. The boss also applies a dendro aura onto itself when using its attacks, so electro damage dealers can periodically get some aggravate reactions for free. Because of these mechanics, Aggravate or Electro teams in general are especially strong against this boss, so if you're a fan of Electro carries, this is a good place to use them. Raiden National gives you a crazy fast clear on this half because it has great single target damage on its own, but Raiden's attacks are also amplified by the occasional Aggravate reactions. So you kind of get the best of both worlds and you can take huge chunks out of the boss's health with each rotation. That having been said, you don't have to use Electro to get a fast clear on this half. Like I mentioned earlier, most teams with high single target damage will do just fine here. Hu Tao obviously being a great option for single target damage. I'm also happy to say that I was able to clear this half in time with Wanderer, which is something that I don't get to do as much as I would like to. Again, if Wanderer can clear this half, that means almost any team can work here. Those are all the tips I have to share. I hope this gave you some insights on how to clear this chamber a little faster. The builds for the characters I used in this video will follow shortly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.